All right. We're going to try a little bit of a build log here. So this evening I am working on getting the last of my patches. We already got the name tape and I've got the no ghost patch on my sleeve. I did uh, embroidered around the, or sewed with the machine around the edges. And what I started doing is we're putting a few finishing touches on the fingers. As you can see, we're just doing a simple loop around the edges of the fingers, which matches the original uniform. Because basically everything, everything in the original movie from the uniforms to the equipment was supposed to look like it came from someone's garage. Like the entire Ghostbusters crew was just like a bunch of geeks in their garage putting things together. And that was essentially the idea and why everything kind of looked kind of janky. Ow. So of course a bunch of guys putting stuff together, scientists, nerds. Uh, putting their putting their equipment together in a garage or a lab, I'm not going to be too concerned about the stitching on their patches. So we're not either. However, oddly enough, we're going to put more thought into actually making this look like it was done in a haphazard, crappy manner. Even if that was not the original, even if that's not the current intent. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is we're purposefully making this look like crap. So we're just going to loop around the edges of the ghost head and arms and let's see, just sort of stitching it down right there. Sorry, I'm not used to the, I'd look at myself, but the camera's over here. Because I'm old and I forget how technology works. So as soon as I'm done with this, then the last thing for the actual flight suit is we have this little guy, which goes on the leg, and then that attaches to a hose. What does the hose do? Nobody really knows. Except the theory was, the hose is yellow. So maybe when the Ghostbusters get a little too scared from the spooks, it went to a bag for, you know, collection. But uh, all we know is, it's just part of the uniform. So we're going to, we're going to put that on there. Once we're done with once we're done with the uniform, then we're going to start on a few more props. I've got my Motorola MT500, the walkie-talkie, has been 3D printed and painted, and all the parts are lined up here on the workbench. I'm going to do a video that assembles that, or at least that's the intent: is do a video. Uh, on the 3D printer, I am printing parts for the, what's called the belt gizmo. Basically, it's a circuit board that's on, and a leather holster on the belt. Uh, there's really not a good way to explain this thing. I'm sure in the story, there's some sort of a reason for it. I think one... One YouTuber said it was supposed to be for discharging excess electrons from the neutrona wand or proton pack or something like that, but they never went into detail in the movie, so we're just going to go with it's just part of the getup. Or as Venkman said, it's a bit of a scientific thing. Can't explain it to you. I think one more 
stitch here. Yep, there we go. So we got our little tiny stitches just along the edge. Match up to the fingers and that'll kind of make it look like the uh, original uniform. I'm just going to tie this sucker off. This is not the first video, this is actually like the second or third that I've attempted. I have learned that it's difficult to talk and record something and do something at the same time, so. Sorry for being a little absent-minded. I'm just not used to this. All right, so here we go. On the sleeve. So, next, we're gonna figure out where this guy goes. So the best way to describe it is it's going to go on the leg. Basically, there's the crotchal area. So we want to be above that, but not too far. And we want to be below this side zipper. So this is the pocket the pocket access zipper, so somewhere about right here. I think what we'll do is we'll kind of split the difference. We'll put it, we'll put it, bend that down. We'll put it a little bit above this above this pocket and zipper sort of between the bottom of this zipper and the top of this pocket and what we need are probably some t-pins so we gotta anchor this sucker down until we can get it sewn in At least get one of these one pin here and then this stuff or this thing I think is gonna get a double double whammy we're going to sew it on we're gonna use some thick thick embroidery floss because we're basically gonna loop it around these uh, pre-punched holes but we really need this thing to stay on here. So I've seen several people recommend E6000. So we're going to hit it with a little adhesive and sew it on there. And I think that is going to be, yeah, I think that's going to be right. That's going to be just off to the side, not in the way of anything. Actually, I think I may rotate it here, and we'll do it just like that. Yeah, I think we'll do it like that. All right, so let's... E6000 is kind of like super glue. It'll bond just about anything but it really works good on things that may need to move or flex a little bit because super glue I found will be a little bit brittle over time. Hopefully we're not pushing the glue through, but it's not exactly going to set very quickly. So we're going to see if we can't get this thing. There 
There we go. All right. Get this thing anchored in place. Throw a nice big knot in there. And let's see if we can't get at least one good stitch on this thing so we can keep it from moving. And I've already already popped it right off all right i'm not sure how many times we want to go around i think maybe twice is enough because here's the problem is lining up this floss or lining up this needle to go back through the tiny holes punched in this rubber every time i have to do that i end up lifting up it up which is disturbing the glue underneath so yeah this is <sighs> this is gonna be difficult sorry it's a Friday night I'm having a little drinky drink and because I don't know where I'm gonna end up posting this video I've heard that I don't want to have music on because I've heard that various services will basically not play your video if they pick up audio that's not licensed. So that's the unfortunate part. I think we'll just live with it. I don't know. Is this working? Can you actually see what I'm doing here maybe basically I'm trying to come up back under this little rubber part back through a teeny tiny hole that's just about as big as this thick needle here. Yeah. Hmm. So far, seems to be working. Oh, and then I just lost the thread. And now that I've already gotten the needle through once before, let's try this 
One more time. Oh yeah, jeez. This is more difficult than I thought it would be. Yeah, and the whole uh, putting some adhesive on the back of this uh, didn't exactly help me much. And at this point, I don't know if it's actually going to stick. So we're going to have to assume that the embroidery thread is primarily what's going to hold this sucker on here. All right, so we're going to pull the T-pin out because this is useless. Kind of gave us an anchor point, but not really. Oh, and after re-threading that, I hate to redo it, but I need a longer piece of thread. We are halfway done. We've got three more of these little things to anchor in. Did I mention this is such a pain? There we go. I think we got it. Yep, there we go. I think we I think we actually missed the the pre-punched hole and we ended up pushing the needle through the rubber. Well, it doesn't matter. It's on there now. Two more. We can do this. Let's see if maybe I can. I and mean, the good news is it's mostly attached. So really, I just need to bring this thing up through. Two holes. And I think we just missed the hole again and just went through the rubber. That's fine. Time flies when you're having fun. Almost 23 minutes later of recording time, anyways. 
We'll see, maybe I'll just speed up some of this stuff. In the final cut. Um, Yay, we got it. <laughs> of course, the last time through, and we actually nailed it right on the first try. Couldn't have done that any of the other five times. Well, actually, twice through on five different holes. And any of the other uh, nine times, all right, and there we go. We have one hose gasket thing. That's... And there we go. That's uh, it's probably as close as we're gonna get. Uh, based on how I've worn this before, that should be pretty much in the right spot. And we've got our, got our name tape, our hose connector, no ghost patch and we are we are done with the uniform next up we're going to work on some other props all right so we just put on the finishing touches for the no ghost patch and the hose connector so what we're going to do is a might as well do a quick test fit so we're going to throw a few more items on we've got the now on webbing belt. Oy. And Ray had his gloves sort of folded over. When and if we get a neutrona wand, this belt greebly will hold that. Another belt greebly goes here. We'll have the belt gizmo, which I'm working on now. It's on the printer. That'll go over here. We'll have a walkie-talkie over here. The hose just sort of fits in the there, the to to the tube fits in there, and really just kind of loops around the belt. I don't know if it goes up under and out or over. And through but basically that's it and if we put the elbow pads on we've got a nearly completed uniform there we go all right so We've basically got a Ghostbuster uniform at this point. We're still working on some of the gizmos and gadgets, but we've got the basic uniform, flight suits done, everything's proper placement, at least as far as I can tell. Uh, yeah, and I've got some uh, black uh, army boots upstairs, which I've used for other projects pocket access there but as far as I can tell that's uh that's more or less spot on yeah that's it so all right we're a ghostbuster just about